The first time I left Akron on a plane, I flew to Salt Lake City. I was terrified to go to Salt Lake City, Utah. If I went to Salt Lake City, I was crying on the plane. I was like, oh, hell no, get me off this plane. I was terrified. But, Wait, why um, was you scared? Huh? Was I scared? I'd never been on a plane before. Oh, yeah, I was screaming when I got on a plane, yeah, too. But it felt like time. a car ride. It did once I got some tears about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The world is going at a pace that we've never seen before. Listen to this. Learn how to learn. That's my biggest wish for you. It is a beautiful thing to see that we're all people. You realize like we all have this connection of things we want and things that move us. I remember multiple times reading through books and world maps and seeing Ohio and Akron wasn't on there. I was like, I'm getting our city on the map. Thank you all for being here today. We know you could be anywhere in the world, literally, but you've chosen to spend some time with our I Promise kids today. Thank you guys for having uh, me. Obviously, it's always an honor and a privilege to uh, be in front of young adults and who are about to take on big challenges in the world. And so by show of hands, how many, how many of you guys know exactly where France is? If I showed you a map, you can point exactly where the country of France is. Raise your hands high if you do. How many of you in here have ever thought about going to France? There is a big world out there, and you get to meet people like Francois when you go out and, and, and see what's happening in the world and open your mind to it. Eventually, we're gonna to come to you guys for a bunch of questions. But before I do that, I'm gonna start with Francois just to give a little introduction of what you do and, and how you ended up sitting here with us. So first of all, when I was a kid, I wanted to become the number one golf golfer in the world. And I became a pro when I was 18 years old. So I dropped out of school when I was 17. I failed as a golfer, really drastically. And then a friend of mine, which I knew from that world, say, come and work for me. What do you want me to do? You got to ship boxes. But, but I learned. I wanted to understand the way it worked. So slowly but surely, I learned the business and became a manager and became the director and ran the business also by him. And eventually I got offered to work for a brand called Audemars Piguet. I could even spell Audemars Piguet. <laughs> I could even say the word the right way. And the first time I got to that job, I say, I don't even like the watch. I don't know, I don't <laughs> want that. But they say, well, you, go, you should be okay. And here I am 28 years later, and I run the company. We've got 2,500 people working. And that's my biggest pride. I'm not even sure I love watches that much, to be honest with you. Yes, do I love watches a little bit? Yes. But what I love the most is people. I've known you a long time. I think you're right. I think you love, like me, I love people more than anything you do. But I think what you're amazing at, the best I've seen, and the reason why the brand has taken off, you really can translate ideas and languages. And to translate, the highest of highest Swiss luxury watchmaking to two kids from Akron, to kids all over this country, black kids, brown kids, white kids, but then also to translate, give them a little flavor back to Switzerland, the board of directors that run this company. And when you, what you guys will understand once you get older and travel the world, Europe, all over Europe, but specifically Switzerland, France, these luxury companies, go back centuries and families still sit on the boards and they they don't under you we all know who drake is right or we all know who lebron is they don't but francois i think you're the best in the world at translating the two back and forth because you had to sit in the middle everything always starts with a vision always you see it first and then you do it and the more precise your vision is the more chances you have to actually reach your goal and spending time with jay in studios, listening to music, seeing who he was meeting at that time. Jay was not Jay today. And eventually, okay, when he said, we're gonna make a watch together, I say, okay, but what's true hip hop? And I spent days, weeks, months to understand the way the whole thing would work up to the point where I felt confident enough that I could go to Switzerland and sell to people at the board well, of directors. Right there. Why did you know that was important? Why did you know or how did you know you need to understand hip hop and go talk to someone? Because like it was starting to go completely mainstream. Most of the friends I was already surrounded 
by where listening to the music and say, oh, have you heard listened to that song? Or have you seen to that artist? It was taking off, but it was the beginning, beginning. And I say, wow, if we go back in history, the 1920s, jazz started in the African-American community. And eventually it went mainstream. I said, this is exactly what hip hop is doing now. And if we catch the train now, we got to be so far ahead of everybody else. So I went to Switzerland to people white six, in their 60s, okay, and sell them on the fact that we should embrace and go with that. And they gave me the right to make 100 watches that will be sold in the US when the watches were finally released. The press conference was at 9 a.m. at the Four Seasons in New York City. I told Jay, if you show up late, I'll hurt you <laughs> for the rest of your life. You cannot show up late. He showed up at 8.45 and it was perfect. It was the very first time in the history of the company that we made the Financial Times. The Financial Times spoke about us Audemars Piguet, an unknown brand in the United States, and Jay, because we passed a bridge. Um, Jay-Z gave us so much inspiration and in a lot of things that he was doing. You know, when he you know, gave us an opportunity or told us the opportunity, we had the opportunity to meet Francois and just start that, that relationship. It made the most sense for me. It made the most sense for us to be able to partner with such a, a you know, a great brand, but, you know, it's not, it wasn't even the brand, it was more of the relationship. Wherever he was at, we would have probably partnered with because of the friendship and the relationship that we was building over the time. Like you said, we met when I was 18, but I didn't become an ambassador till I was like 25, 26 years old. So it, you know, it takes, it takes time, you know, it's not, you know, everyone wants to, you know, make instant oatmeal and they want things to happen right away. You know, you can't, you know, let yourself get deterred when you have um, something that you love, but it doesn't happen right away. You know, that's just another opportunity for you to just dig down deeper and just keep pushing and keep pushing. If it's something that you love and it's something that you want to do and that you're passionate about, and you have other people around you that's have the same common goals, you just keep pushing. So I think me being with Audemars for these years and, and you know, being an ambassador at one time, but then just supporting the brand still to this day, um, you know, it's been a, uh, it's been a treat. Um, you know, I got an opportunity I'm a kid from, like, literally, I used to walk up and down Market all the time. I grew up five minutes from here. Um, I remember times never, ever thinking that I would leave this city, like, ever. This is, this is it for me, you know, and long story short, I end up in Switzerland, in Geneva, doing, building my own watch. Like, it was like, the fuck, this is crazy. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry for that, you know, but you guys are old enough. You guys heard curse words before. It's like, I'm sitting in, I'm sitting in Geneva where they're making these watches and it's so intricate, it's so beautiful, it's so timeless. But I'm sitting there like, I can't believe I'm here. Okay, so this is a question for Lee Goat himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're in year 20, right? And you've been at a high level for a long, long time and people still doubt you, and people still think that you're not like the greatest player in the world. I don't care what anybody says, you will be the greatest player in the world. But um, how do you stay at a high level for so long? Uh, first of all, I love you. Um, you're awesome, your energy, I can tell your energy just through your voice, you're super, super duper dope. Um, and I wish I had all your hair too. Um, <laughs> Um, Care I think, for some shoes? <laughs> for, for, if that's possible, I can, you, you have a lifetime supply of shoes if I get that afro. <laughs> um, I think for me, it's all about just staying consistent, um, you know, and continue to. Uh, I never believed in, you know, you know, you only can get to the ceiling. You know, I, I believe that there's so much more depth than just, you know, rising up to the ceiling. You know. Um, I felt like I, I wanted to, to, to knock the ceiling away. And, um, and also I've always heard this um, father of time notion and this prime thing, you know, and how long you can be in your prime as a basketball player. They say the majority get to about 26, 27 and 
And around 32, 33, then the prime is gone. And now father time starts kicking in and you start declining. And uh, I guess I was the guy at home that, that was like, I'm, I want to change the narrative of, of how long you can stay in your prime and how long you can try to define the odds versus, you know, the father of time, you know, so. But it takes a, a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of sacrifice and it takes people around you that believe in your vision that allow you to just be great. Not saying that you won't have failure because that's all part of the process. But they allow, if they allow you to be great and not just uh, confined in what everybody else say, because everybody's gonna have a thought about what they think you should be, what you should do, and when you don't do it, they're gonna be saying that we, we already knew it, we knew that was gonna happen. I don't believe in it. The fact that I made it from this Right around the corner, on, I used to stay on Silver Street, literally right around the corner. And then before that, I stayed in the bottom at Elizabeth Projects. And to make it out of this city, there's no, nobody that a media or a critique or somebody that can say to me that can deter me, because it's like everything else for me is like extra credit. I made it out of this. Y'all know what this is. Make it out of Akron. I remember multiple times reading through books and, and, and world maps and seeing Ohio and Akron wasn't on there. The motivation that he felt when people was like, you ain't gonna be shit or you never gonna make it and he turned that the opposite way was the same motivation I had when I didn't see our city on the map. I was like, I'm getting our city on the map. Some way, somehow I'm getting it on the map. So like, don't let nobody stop you. Not even yourself. So this one is for Francois. Um, any advice for us on how to rise to the top like that? Number one advice, and especially for your generation where the world is changing so fast, learn how to learn. Listen to this, learn how to learn. There are jobs that will be created in the next five years that we don't even know the name of. The world is going at a pace that we've never seen before. So I can tell you that there will be so many opportunities to adapt to what's going to come. So learn how to learn. It's a great one. And never stop learning too. Think about the young you that will be 10 years, 15, 20 years from now sitting on this chair and be the one that will talk to them about the way you came out of the whole thing and succeeded yourself. That's my biggest wish for you because at the end, that's what true love means. And I really mean it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you all. So how, for how many of you was that your first time meeting a non-American? Has anyone else met? Uh, a person from France or England or? I have met someone from France and uh, he told me about that company. That's how I knew about him. Cause, really? Yeah, he lives there and we talk usually and he's like, yeah, I, I try. I really want to buy his brand one day, you know? Really? He's in high school with you? Um, he's currently a senior. Oh, really? He moved from France? No, he's in France right now. Oh, is he, does yeah. he speak better English than him? Yeah, right. Yeah, he speaks English. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's you only way to start with me? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> well, you might speak better. Can you say something with French for us? Oh, by the way, we didn't get to do that. But... Mais bien sûr, tu veux que je te dise quoi, Maverick? Moi, j'adore. De toute façon, c'est un très beau langage. It's a language of love. Sound like a commercial on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a compliment. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. What did you say? Huh? What did you say? That it's a beautiful language and it's the ultimate language of love. You know that. We've been talking about this for 20 years. Mm, that's good. Love, you that's remember? Good. There's love. a lot of love in there. Love. Yeah, love. <laughs> <laughs> Francois, they, when they all visit France one day, Paris obviously is the place to start. By the way, in France, they kind of, Paris is the biggest city. Parisians in the rest of France is like two different places, by the way, right? Kind of. <laughs> what should they see and do when they go visit France, besides having a croissant? Go with what you feel like. There is not a certain thing that you do and not something else. 
you got some of the best bakeries in the world. So you need, if it's your passion, you have some of the best fashion designers in the world. So go and see fashion, the fashion world. And, uh, and that's what you should actually go for. Go with the flow. And being, talking, we had a, a theme was about being open to the world. And it's one of my favorite things is seeing the world. When you first came to America, it was what, 20? So the very first time was 1991 to, to run the New York Marathon. Yes. And for me, that was the, the beginning of the American dream because I'd never been to the United States. And it was like, oh, I'm, co I'm going to the US, which was like, wow. <laughs> the only national anthem that still to this day gives me goosebumps is the US one. So I've got the French one, but the American one. I always felt it, I don't know why. But then I really moved to the U.S. in 1999. And when you moved to the U.S. in 1999, what was the biggest adjustment for you? What was the biggest thing where you're like, whoa, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make this adjustment. This is different than anything I'm doing. The size, the size, the depth of everything. The, when you come from France, we are 60 million people. There is, we don't have tall buildings, all those type of things. And I moved to New York City. So you arrive and you're like a kid, you're, you're 10 years old and you're impressed by everything. I was not speaking English properly, so people were talking, I was not understanding. I will remember always the first time someone wanted to send me an email and he said, yes, dot com. I said, dot what? <laughs> <laughs> I could not understand what was going on. And I was in charge of already a team of 12 people which was for me very scary because I was in charge of lives and livelihoods. So I had to make things happen. Uh, but I knew that I was in the right place for me. And for you, LeBron, as you've traveled the world, what are some of your favorite places you've been and some of the things that have really opened your eyes? Have you seen, you've been, I've been lots of places with you all over the world, from China to Europe, to yeah. all over the place. I mean, yeah, we've been, we've been all over the world, obviously, and, and a lot of for basketball, but now because you know, we just like traveling the world, but, um, you know, like you said, I mean, Paris is a beautiful place, you know, to be able to go to some of the museums, the art, we love art, so to be able to go to the Louvre and, you know, to be able to see so many things in Paris is such a beautiful, loves, loving feel there when you get there. So I think it's, a, and it's not that far, you know, from here, you know, it's like, it's what, six hours, six hour flight, you know, it's not like we're going, you know, too far. So um, that's, I mean, that's one of, uh, of a few places that I love. Um, been to Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona in Spain is, is, is beautiful. Tokyo is beautiful as well. Um, and I mean, there's so many great places that you gotta just explore to be able to see. Were you nervous going to all these places at first? I mean, yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, the first time I left Akron, I went to, <laughs> the first time I left Akron on a plane, I flew to Salt Lake City. I was terrified to go to Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> Uh, let alone go to, go to Europe. I went to Salt Lake City. I was crying on the plane. I was like, oh, hell no, get me off this plane. I was terrified. But, Wait, why um, was you scared? Huh? Was I scared? I'd never been on a plane before. Oh, yeah, I was thinking when I got on a plane yeah, too. That was but the it first felt like time. a car ride. It did once I got some tears about it. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, that's a beautiful thing, man, to be able to see different cultures, you know, see different walks of life, hear different languages, hear different accents. You know, I think it's a... Uh, that's a beautiful thing. Have you guys all thought about traveling the world and the jobs that you all want to do? Yes, especially with real estate. Where do you want to go? I want to go everywhere. I want to be able to make money everywhere where I'm at, like owning properties, letting people own their homes, like all of that. Like I just always knew I wanted to make money and still be able to move around how I want to move around. Like even if it's an Airbnb, a house, it could be a party. Like I just want my name on it. Nice. Whoa. There's some drive there. Yes. Um, since cause um, I rely on my uncle as well, cause he's like a traveler as well. So like, if I want to like do that and I could just like do that with criminology or like some, um, like a traveling thing, like a travel criminal justice person, or I could just rely on my acting as well. Cause I can go somewhere with my acting career. And they go all over too. Yeah. They travel all over the world yeah. to, to shoot movies, shows, all type of stuff. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I really want to bake anything, like really anything that in culture wise, I want to make stuff for 
J Japan, I want to make stuff for the UK, I want to make stuff for anywhere, so I really want to travel the world to go everywhere and realize what stuff everybody likes and it's really... Do you try food from all over the world now? I want to. Are you open to trying food Yes, from I'm really open to it. I've tried multiple things for the past few years because my mom's always told me, you're picky, Alana, you know, you're too picky, you need to stop it. <laughs> Do you ever watch those shows like uh, those shows that have people like travel all over the world, like the late great uh, Anthony Bourdain. Bourdain? Did you ever watch yeah, like his show and they yeah. go places all over the world, just try all different types yeah. of foods and things like? I seems really pretty cool. That. I've been watching those since I was at least three. Like I've been watching them at my grandma's house. My grandma will turn it on. I'll be sitting right in front of that TV. I'm <laughs> like, I want to try that one day. Yeah. Yeah, and my my grandma was she wants to see me all the time. She wants to put me in front of the TV and be like, Hey, you want to try that one day? You know, like I'm like, yeah, yeah, I the do. One thing, Grant is usually the ones who be in that, being on that stove in that kitchen, yeah. cooking the very thing. So yeah, that whole thing makes me think we got to do something. You will choose because we talk, we talk, we talk, but I want action. <laughs> so this is what's gonna happen. From the session this morning to now, you got to pick six to eight kids. Okay. We'll fly them to Switzerland. Wow. We'll arrange a trip for them to come to see us in Switzerland. I will see if we could extend the trip to go also and spend one or two days in Paris, and maybe one or two days in London. How many of you guys would want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and, for, and for a small amount of, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, we're doing it, seriously. That would be. We got to finance a trip for, you gotta find me six to eight kids from this school that will make, will send to do a little tour. The beautiful thing about Europe, all those places, you can take these lovely train rides to each, which is our. No, it's gotta be. We gotta do that for you guys. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And bring them to Switzerland. What do you wanna show them in Switzerland? Us. Us. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. You guys gotta be open to trying the food yeah. and listening I to the music and everything. You just I immerse like yourself. I like food. You like food? I, I like food. <laughs> <a lot. laughs> Me too. Yeah, Me but too. wait, wait, wait. Before you say that, we gotta make you try things that you might have difficulties to deal with. Yes. Do you like cheese? No eyes. Just no eyes. <laughs> just okay. Cheese. Just not blue cheese. Okay. Just okay. not good she's, cheese. Yeah. She's saying she's just not good cheese. But I'm telling you right now, if any one of you, while you travel to those countries, is asking once for a burger. <laughs> that's, not 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 going on. <laughs> that's not a thing in France, by the way. Why would you guys want to go to those countries and see and see those places? I mean, me personally, I've never been outside of the like, you know, United States area. And, you know, it was always cool to see new things and experience like different things other than like US this, US that. It's like, it's good to get out there and pay attention to what's going on outside of this here. Yeah. Totally. Ron, if you had my basketball skills, it's not very good. <laughs> have you seen me play basketball yet? Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. um, what would you have done in college? What would you have wanted to do? Um, growing up, um, it's always been about helping people for me, you know, so even even when I was, you know, playing a game of basketball, playing football and um, exceeding and, and being very successful at it, I knew that I always wanted to still help my community. You know, that that's never left my mind. Um, I always told myself no matter how good I can be or how big I might grow into or if I move to a different city and play for a different franchise. When I got into the NBA, I always knew I wanted to help change my community, you know, help change you guys that, in, in this community. So now that's always been my passion. Even, I mean, I love basketball, but also love this as well. Well, um, I grew up kind of like you. I grew up where we didn't have a lot of money. When I was growing up, when I was a baby, when I don't even remember, um, our f fridge was empty. We didn't have a good place to stay at all. Like, I'm an only child. I don't have, not, where we live now, I don't have many friends. Plus I'm APS online. So in your eyes, when you were like little and you seen that, you know, you didn't have much, how'd you feel about it? Like, how did you cope with it? Like, um, I think the way I cope with it is I saw how hard my mom was working and not even saying working at a job, 
just working to provide for our family that was in the household, wherever we were, that I refused to add another burden on top of her. I'm already a child and uh, that she has, that she has to make sure that's, you know, kept warm or try to keep fed and things of that nature. I didn't want to add my own personal excuses on top of what she's going through already. Right. And she was young. My mother was 16 when she had me. So, you know, she was in high school. So I didn't want to be, you know, Too much. four years old. She's 20, you know, and I'm saying how I don't like this. This is this is not life. This is whatever. So a lot of times I would hold it in, you know, and, and keep it to myself or ask myself why this and why that. But it was very rare, very rare that I would literally take it to her because I can only imagine if if you're feeling that way as a kid, then I, it, it is even heightened as an adult. Right. You know, so I didn't want to add that. Yeah, I feel Even that. more pressure on top of the pressure that was already there. That's what I used to do. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. the human mind will tell you, why me? Why us? For sure. It's not even, it's nothing you can do about it. That's, that's the human mind where you question yourself, you question the situation that you're in. And there's one or two things you can do at that moment. You can either confine to it and let it keep taking you deeper and deeper into the abyss, or you can be like, yeah. it's the hand I was dealt. Let's make the most of it. It's the cards I have, I need mm-hmm. to play them. You know it. And the things that you guys love, go really deep into it. Don't, don't think you know that you ever know enough about it. You can always learn about the thing that you want to know, and the more you understand it, the more you're able to have a conversation with someone else who understands. If you bump into a chef or someone, have that conversation to learn even more. And the information that you have, you never, never assume that you know enough, because you don't. And it actually will help you cope with things that are going on around you in a way that you never thought. And the more you actually study something, the more you realize you don't know about it. You actually think as you're learning, like, oh, I'm learning. So I'm gonna, you actually, in that learning process, you realize I don't know enough about this. I gotta go even further and even deeper into this. Yeah. And understand it. Can we all stand up right here? We can kind of like- Thank you guys all, buddy. Get a photo and not you take it. Oh, how did you know we was about to be done? <laughs> she said a timer on us. She said, I'm, hey, listen, all I got is 10 minutes. For you.